Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We have 2 minus x equals 2 to the power negative x and we're going to be solving for x values. How many solutions are there? Are there any solutions? Are there infinitely many solutions? Make a guess and then we'll check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and take this expression and do a lot of manipulations and then I'll tell you why I'm doing it. And then we'll talk about the number of solutions, if there are any, and why, and so on and so forth. I'm going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha. Hopefully, that'll give you an idea. So let's go ahead and start by writing the right-hand side as a power of e. Why? You'll see in a little bit. Okay, I'll tell you why. So, But I'm going to go ahead and write this as 2 minus x equals e to the power ln 2 to the power negative x, which is the same thing as 2 to the power negative x, but I do want an e on the right-hand side, okay? So that's my first step. Next step is I'm going to bring the x negative x to the front, so it's going to be 2 minus x equals e to the power negative x ln 2. Awesome. Next step, we're going to multiply both sides by something to get rid of the negative exponent, and guess what that's going to be? The opposite exponent. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides. And I do need a little bit of, of room for this. So let me go ahead and move things around like this maybe. Is that going to work? And probably. And then I could kind of move this forward. And here, I can move this too. So it's going to be like this. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and multiply both sides by... Hmm, let's see. We're going to multiply both sides by e to the power x ln 2. And here the same thing, e to the power x ln 2. Now what happens on the right hand side? You add the exponents and you get 0. Yes, that's what I wanted because I wanted to get 1. e to the power 0 equals 1. So that gives me 1. What about the left hand side? Whatever that is, right? So we're going to write it as 2 minus x times e to the power x ln 2 equals 1. Awesome. So far so good? Okay. Now, there is an x in the exponent, there is a negative x at the base or the coefficient. I don't like that. They both have to be the same kind. I can't change the 2 minus x because guess what? That's problematic. I mean, I could multiply both sides by negative. Wait a minute. That's what I'm supposed to do. Why am I, why am I doing it, right? I mean, multiply both sides by negative. I got lost. This is too hard. <laughs> Anyways, so it's actually not too hard. Multiply both sides by negative 1, and, you know, a minus b is going to turn into b minus a. Don't forget that this is important and very helpful. a minus b and b minus a are opposites because their sum is 0. Make sense? Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and manipulate this even more because I do have an x minus 2, but I don't have e to the power x minus 2. Oh, come on, what are you going to do with that? But first of all, let's take care of ln 2. Multiply both sides by ln 2. That's going to bring the ln2 at the bottom, and we do need that. Great. And now we're going to do something amazing. Now notice that x minus 2 multiplied by ln2 is the same thing as x ln2 minus 2 ln2. But I only have part of this here. You see that? I want the whole thing, right? I'm greedy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this expression and divide e to the power x ln2 by e to the power 2 ln 2. So when I subtract the exponents, I'm going to get, what was that, like a touch, and it disappears. Anyways, so I'm dividing by e to the power 2 ln 2. I know things look really weird, but don't worry, we're going to clean it up. Now, here comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and the, uh, <laughs> subtract the exponents. I couldn't say it. x ln 2 minus 2 ln 2 equals negative ln2, and let me go ahead and move this to the front, 2 ln2 times ln e, wait a minute, I can't do that, no, 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 here's what I can do, I can write this as e to the power ln4, yes, because 2 can be moved, but not the exponent, but then e to the power ln something is something, so this is going to be 4, can I erase it, allow me to do it, come on, we've done so much work, so we deserve it, okay, that's a 4, you get it, this is a 4, check it out, now, Here's the fun part. Algebra, ta-da. Let's go ahead and factor this. We're going to get x minus 2 ln 2 times e to the power x minus 2 ln 2. Don't you love this? This is amazing. It's kind of like, okay, how do you know what to do? 
you can kind of reverse engineer things. If you've done uh, quite a few of these, you'll get used to them. So here's what I was trying to do. I wanted to get something that looks like t e to the t. You know why? Because I wanted to use Lambert's w. So time for Lambert's w. If you Lambert w t e to the t, you just get t. So it kind of dissolves this expression and gives us this mysterious t. In other words, it's the inverse function for t e to the t, because if you invert this, and of course it should be invertible on a certain interval, it's not one to one, so on and so forth. And that has a different story, but let's suppose it's invertible on this interval and we get that. Make sense? Now, let's go ahead and W both sides, a giant W here and a smaller W here. It doesn't matter, same thing. But notice that this is my T and that's the same thing as you. So I have T E to the T. If I W it, that gives me T, which is X minus two ln two. And the right hand side is just going to be some Lambert, which we're going to find out too. Okay? But first, let's go ahead and simplify this for x. Divide by ln2. Add 2. And that's going to give you x, right? So you can leave it at that and then use, use a calculator. But let's not keep it there. I'm going to go ahead and work on this now. What is that thing? Sometimes it, you can simplify it easily. Sometimes you have to use a calculator. Now, I'm going to start with w negative ln 2 over 4 and write it as w negative 4 ln 2 over 16. Again, this is kind of reverse, this is, has been reverse engineered. And then this is going to be w negative 4 ln 2 times 1 over 16. And then this is going to be w negative 4 ln 2 times e to the power ln 1 over 16 because that's what it is, right? And then this is going to be w negative 4 ln 2 times e to the power ln 2 to the power negative 4. Allow me to write that and skip one step at least. And this is going to become e to the power negative 4 ln 2. Do you see what I see? Yes. This is another t or c, I don't know, whatever. You can call it C if you want because it's a constant. Now I have Lambert of C e to the C, which is just C. Do you see it? I hope you do. So I got what? C from here, which is negative 4 ln 2. Okay, let's go ahead and back substitute. This is equal to negative 4 ln 2. Can I just copy that here? Negative 4 ln 2. So x is going to be negative 4 ln 2 divided by ln 2 plus 2 ln2 cancels out, yay, negative 4 plus 2 becomes negative 2. Seriously? Did we do all this work to find negative 2? No. Well, is that the only solution? Are there any other solutions? Are there infinitely many solutions? Well, there's more than this. But negative 2 is one of the solutions, and it's kind of obvious you can find it, even by guess and check. Some people don't like guessing it's not a solution method or whatever. It's not a problem solving strategy. Like, whatever you think, I mean... I think it's a problem-solving strategy. Is it efficient? Sometimes not. But anyways, if you replace x with negative 2, it's going to work. But let me tell you something that would simplify this problem quite a bit. If you set negative x equal to z, you would get 2 plus z equals... Come on, is that z? That's an x. 2 plus z equals 2 to the z. And this would probably be easier to solve because z equals 2. You see it, right? Okay, you z it. Okay, there you go. So x equals... Negative 2 is a solution, but that's not the only solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things. First, I'm going to show you the graph. Beautiful, right? Well, Desmos can graph it too, but sometimes Wolfram Alpha graph is better because of the scaling, and this one is nice, so I'm happy with that. It graphs it for you, so I don't even have to ask it. And then real solutions. Uh-oh, we got another branch, right? Obviously, you got two values for this. And then if you look at the real solutions, that's what you get from the first one, about 1.69. That's the solution. And you're going to, wait a minute, do you see it on the graph? Yes, you do. So one of them is negative two, the other one is a positive value because of all these additions. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.